From our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening. Tonight we begin with a sporting bombshell. Australian Test Captain Tim Payne has quit in tears after it was revealed he has been investigated for sending lewd messages and a graphic photo to a female co-worker at Cricket Tasmania in 2017. His shock resignation comes just 18 days from the Ashes opener, Australian cricket's biggest scandal since the ball tampering affair of 2018. The bombshell has landed on the eve of Tim Payne's expected return to cricket. Tom Johnson joins us now for more. Tom, Payne was finally ready to come back from surgery. Yes, good evening, Kim. He was after being out of action for months. He was set to put the gloves on for university against South Hobart Sandy Bay at Queenborough Oval. We've contacted the club but haven't had a response as to whether he'll still play tomorrow. On today's developments, Cricket Tasmania says it only became aware of the text messages when the accuser, a former employee, was charged with theft in mid-2018. Cricket Tasmania adding there was no complaint raised at the time of the incident in November 2017, nor when the employee's position with the organisation was terminated. An investigation took place and found the interaction was consensual and occurred only once. Today's events bring an, an end to only the second time a Tasmanian has captained the Nationals test side after Ricky Ponting. Payne oversaw 23 tests, winning 11 of them after being a surprise call-up to the job following the sandpaper scandal. Even more remarkable, he was thinking about quitting professional cricket not long before finding himself in the top job but was talked out of it. Payne is still available for selection in the upcoming Ashes series, although the search for a new skipper has begun, Kim. The Premier has conceded Tasmania may not hit its 90% double dose milestone by December 15 as originally planned. 12 to 18 year olds will now be targeted through a five day vaccination blitz in a bid to dramatically ramp up the rollout. December 15 is fast approaching, but the vaccine rollout is slowing down. Current rate, we will barely get to 90% of the population over the age of 12 by the 15th of December. Young people still left in the queue will be targeted through a vaccine blitz. From tomorrow, Saturday the 20th of November to Wednesday the 24th of November, you'll be in with a chance to win a daily spot prize with five spot prizes in five days available to each region. Labor says the pressure should fall on parents. Working with parents will be absolutely paramount if we're to ensure that we get those young people um, to get their vaccination. The Greens warning children under 12 will be left vulnerable when the borders reopen. This is a critical group of young people who will be out and about all summer uh, doing their level best to socialise and good on them but they need the protection while they're doing it. The Premier insists Fortress Tasmania will be in full swing come December 15, with extra security at interstate airports and a series of checkpoints for people entering the state. Every person obviously walks through the airport entry gates and will, walk, will need to display to a biosecurity officer their evidence that they've met the rules regarding double vaccination and if from a high risk jurisdiction that they've had the pre-travel test. 30 police officers also on deck to keep a watchful eye at border checkpoints. We think it's important that people feel reassured by our presence, but where there are uh, people that try to enter the state and do not comply with the requirements, we need to be in a position to respond to them. Disability workers are required to have their jab by Sunday, and soon patrons and staff in high-risk settings, including large-scale events and nightclubs, will need to be vaccinated too, just in time for summer. But if you're uh, at an event uh, from the 6th of the December with an approved limit of 5,000 people, 5,000 people will be able to stand up and drink or dance. Public Health dancing around the idea of extending its vaccine mandate to other industries. Instead, businesses can create their own COVID safe plans to do their bit for the community when the border reopens. Ainsley Kosh, 7 Tasmania News. Well, Good Samaritans have rushed to help a man who was hit by a car on Invermay Road in Launceston around 10.30 this morning. A woman working nearby applied first aid to the pedestrian before an ambulance arrived. The first priority was first aid to him because he was bleeding quite profusely from the back of his head. So it was an open wound. He was taken to the Launceston General Hospital and is in a stable condition. 
Perth father of two who was killed in a motorbike crash earlier this week is being remembered for his big heart and tireless charity work. 38-year-old Matthew Richards spent the past three years raising tens of thousands of dollars for children's charity, Variety. Almost a month to the day since Tazbash was launched in Longford, the boys were back, but this time without their best mate. Uh, really hard. Yeah, really, really hard. They brought along Connie the cow, Matthew Richards' pride and joy to the school fair. He was definitely the driving force behind us. Uh, he was the motivation. Uh, he was our main crew leader uh, and it just won't be the same. He was the, he was the be all and end all of our team. The 38 year old was tragically killed on Wednesday night on the Midland Highway when he came off his motorbike near Bredalburn. His devastated family saying we've lost the most lovable, kind hearted, amazing bloke I've ever had the pleasure of knowing. Rest easy brother. Matthew's friends say he was a loving father to his two children, Max and Hallie. When he wasn't spending time with his family, he was out raising money for charity. We've raised almost $50,000 in two years for six and disadvantaged children in Tassie. I don't think um, Bash will be the same without him moving forward. Um, in his short three years with, with Variety, uh, Taz Bash, uh, he really left a huge uh, footprint. On the day of his death, Matthew had posted on Facebook about his annual Christmas fundraiser, donating 100 bikes to children in need. Children haven't got a choice, he always used to say. Um, and when it come to that, he was, you know, all he wanted to do was help the kids and made sure they had the best start to life. And that's, that's what he was all about. A GoFundMe page has been set up to support his wife, Christy, and their two children. He was just a loving, loving guy and he will, he will be truly missed. Letitia Wallace, 7 Tasmanian News. The Eastern Shore public has a brand new way to access a popular waterfront. The Bell Reeve Pier is stretching 105 metres and decorated with local art and opening to the community today. It has been installed to help protect boats and infrastructure in Kangaroo Bay from storm waves while providing a space for walkers and fishers. It's a great spot to have a view out, toward, out over the river towards the mountain but they can sit here and they can fish, um, they can generally really enjoy the ambience of the area. The pier is a long time coming with the idea raised more than 10 years ago. Taz Water is urging Hobart residents to be mindful of usage, predicting restrictions will hit in summer due to water quality issues. Heavy spring rains said to have created some challenges to the current supply. Spring downpours hitting parts of the state, causing headaches for Taz Water. The heavy rain is stirring up sediment and suspending it in the water. We call this turbidity. What that does, it's happening to such an extent that we can't treat the water to an acceptable level. So what we have to do is rely on our storages. Adding pressure to meet the high demand for Greater Hobart while trying to revamp its Bryn Eston treatment plant. Potential warnings now on the horizon. Water restrictions are likely. Uh, we will continue to monitor the water quality in our networks and also the, the, the level of water in our storages and we'll make a decision um, when we need to. Um, we will give customers enough notice. With an influx of people expected when Tasmania's borders reopen next month, Taz Water is asking locals to ease up on water usage now before summer. What we're asking is for all Tasmanians and southern Tasmanians especially to lend a hand and help us conserve water. So any small changes that people can make like reusing water in the gardens or only using a washing machine or dishwasher when they're full can help. It's hoped the significant upgrades here at the Bryn Eston water treatment plant will increase capacity and avoid similar supply challenges in the future. It's a large catchment, it has multi uses and so the water has um, changed since the 1960s um, through, through various um, uses in the catchment so yeah we've um, had to make changes to cope with that. The plant is set to be fully completed by mid 2023. Ruby Kamane, 7 Tasmania News. Construction of a new $97 million UTAS building is underway. The site on Willis Street in Launceston will be home to high-level science and health research. More than 200 workers will be involved with the project, which is tipped to be ready to open in 2024. With more than 10,000 square metres of floor space, developer Fairbrother admits even a two-year time frame could be tight. This is definitely the biggest project Fairbrother has undertaken in our own right, outside the joint ventures that we've previously undertaken. This is going to really, really help to provide 
a workforce in the health sciences, but as well in the sciences, into the next several decades. The new building will be known as a shed in a nod to the site's past life as a railway hub. Well, Tasmanians are being urged to fill a second-hand bag with toiletries and sanitary items as part of a Christmas appeal to help vulnerable women and girls. Share the Dignity is aiming to supply local charities with 5,000 bags this festive season so they can distribute them to those struggling. Um, they're just not um, having access to these, um, especially in uh, living in homeless um, situations or in domestic violence shelters. So it's just um, a way of ensuring that everybody um, has um, the dignity they deserve of getting the basics for life. It's been really great for our um, people because many of them are on very limited budgets and so it's great to be able to offer them something uh, extra. And I wish you could see the delight when they receive one of these bags. Filled bags can be dropped to Bunnings stores across the state until November 28 or can be sponsored online. A father and son duo has arrived in Hobart after traversing nearly 300 kilometres across the state over six days. Jack and Chris Duffy began the journey from Georgetown on Sunday and arrived in Hobart this afternoon in time for the Point to Pinnacle event this weekend. The Just Like Jack team has so far raised $17,000 to buy special equipment including wheelchairs for children in need. The Hobart Hurricanes have beaten the Melbourne Renegades by 52 runs in the WBBL. Rachel Priest was out for a duck on only the second ball of the day before Ruth Johnson and Mignon Duprio combined for a monster stand of 120 runs between them. And they were exceptionally well so far. Goes high this time. Cries of catch it. May have erred. Johnston, no. It's gone all the way. The Hurricanes finished at 5 for 161 from their 20 overs. The Renegades were bowled out for 109 runs. Wild and Hobart, a T20 cricket match has marked a very special milestone for two Tasmanian schools. The country's oldest continuously operating independent schools, Launceston Grammar and Hutchins, celebrating 175 years in a clash against the old boys teams today, boasting players who have lined up for Australian and Tasmanian sides in the past. The game will come before a T20 match between current students this evening. Launceston Grammar won by 42 runs. The Jack Jumpers have named Clint Steindl as their inaugural captain. Players voted unanimously to appoint Steindl as skipper. A two-time NBL champion with the Perth Wildcats, he was the first player to arrive in Tasmania and has set the benchmark for the new side. Doing things that need to be done. Um, that's going to be, I guess, my direction uh, going forward. And um, I mean, a lot of it will come down to work ethic outside of practice and, and the things you do in that part. Point guard Jared Weeks has been named vice captain. Just trying to embrace our culture. Um, that was a huge part of, of this club. Um, growing it from nothing, we have to have the best culture in the league. Their first test is against the Adelaide 36ers on Sunday in Olveston. And with talk of the Derby River Derby returning to the northeast, tonight's Friday flashback takes a look at the iconic event. What started 40 years ago when two mates challenged each other to a race turned into a draw card for thousands. This is Derby in the 1970s, before the days of million dollar homes and around the time the idea for the Derby River Derby was first conceived. Two decades later, this is what it would become. For one day a year, the sleepy tin mining town transformed into an action attraction. We'll blow them away with our beauty, so we'll be crossing the finish line first. The story goes, two mates decided to have a race down the Ringaruma River one day. The concept grew year by year, hitting a peak by the 90s. We are live! <laughs> winners. Winners. Have you been in the race before? No. Get out in front and kill the rest of them. Those on the riverbank had a job as well. Punters pegged homemade missiles at those heading downstream. Who are you going to aim that at? Anyone. Impressive. Impressive. Yeah, impressive. <laughs> For reporters, covering the event was a rite of passage. Andrew Hart, Southern Cross News. Southern Cross went to war, face paint and all. They look good, don't they? Although there was only one team they really wanted to beat. <laughs> and as for rules, they were meant to be broken. Oh no, we do have rules. It's a bit hard to enforce them, but we do have rules. The race hasn't run since 2018, when it was scrapped due to a lack of volunteers. But recently, there has been talk of bringing the event back in its original form, a casual race between mates. Maybe one day, once again, it'll make a splash in this serene stream. 
Gee, love the face bank, Kim. You're in a whole lot of trouble. I will see you in my office afterwards. <laughs> see you, Tom. Murph will join us after the break with the weather. Good evening. Hope you've had a great Friday so far. Mine's been pretty good up until now, but things around here can change quickly. What happened today? Well, Hobart and Devonport got to 18. Launceston's 21 was the warmest around the state, while Burnie recorded 19. Temperatures still struggled to reach average. Friendly beaches and Bushy Park 19, Lowhead 18, Flinders Island and St Helen 17, King Island and Grove 16 today and Strawn 15. A few showers overnight, but nothing much today as the clouds sat over the west, south and also the northeast. Meanwhile, an extensive band of middle to high cloud covers the southern part of the continent, a little more over northern tropical areas. Tomorrow, a weak ridge of high pressure finds itself right over Tasmania with centres either side. The broad trough persists over the mainland. Winds from a west-south-west direction and up to 20 knots over most waters swells to 3.5 metres. We do have a minor flood warning though, that's for the Jordan River. Forecast for the weekend, Hobart a shower or two tomorrow, 16 the top, 16 for Medina. Showers increasing for Oatland, 7 overnight, 15 the maximum. Launceston a shower or two, 21 the high, 18 for Devonport, a shower for Liawini, 3 overnight, a top of 12 tomorrow. Burnie partly cloudy and 19, Strawn 16 degrees and Marawar 15. St Helens tomorrow looking for 17, a late shower moving through, Swansea a shower and 16, 15 for Orford, a shower there down the east coast. There's the UV at a very high 8 tomorrow. On Sunday mainly fine over the west with a few isolated showers elsewhere, partly cloudy day on Monday with light winds and on Tuesday another partly cloudy day with the chance of a shower over the northwest in the evening. A sunny 28 degrees in Perth, a morning shower for Adelaide, a cool cloud Cloudy day on the way for Melbourne. Showers and a late storm for Sydney and a sunny 31 in Brisbane. Bit of cloud over Hobart, 14 at the moment. Sunny in Launceston, 16 right now. Devonport, sunny and 16. Kim, you've had a good Friday as well. Hardly a stumble tonight. Oh, how rude. Good night. Well, finally tonight, Tasmania's first pet expo is taking place tomorrow. Launceston Silverdome is ready to host everything from piglets to llamas in a family-friendly day out. Educating children and families, uh, I think that the best thing that can come out of this is um, to teach children the appropriate way to responsibly look after pets. 1,000 tickets have already been snapped up. That is all we have time for this Friday. Good night.